Hi, Tom Clendon here, your SBR online lecturer. IFRS 13, Fair Value Measurement. It's one of those accounting standards which seems to regularly pop up in the SBR exam because so many different accounting standards touch on fair value. Whether you're dealing with the calculation of goodwill and the measurement of NCI uh, and the measurement of the net assets that we've acquired, whether you're looking at financial instruments, whether you're looking at PPE, fair value is there and in other standards too. We don't have an accounting standard that requires us to measure cost or gives us guidance on measuring cost. And I think that's because cost is relatively simple as a concept to understand and to measure. Cost is what you paid for it. Whereas fair value has historically been a subject of debate. What do we mean by value? Is it what we are prepared to pay for an asset? What we are prepared to sell an asset for? And how do you arrive at that, at that value? So IFRS 13 comes in and has the objective really of giving us a framework, giving us a consistent and comparable approach for measuring fair value. The standard does not extend the use of fair value and the standard does not require the use of fair value it's a library, it's a, it's a reference book, if you like. So if another standard says, let's measure this asset or liability at fair value, then the process, the framework, the principles for doing that is found in IFRS 13. Fair value from a useful information point of view is, I think, relevant. You know, useful information is, is both has to be relevant and a faithful representation. And relevant information is pointing to the future. Yeah, relevant information is predictive. And if you've got an asset at fair value, then it's up to date, it's, it's forward looking, it's what maybe you could sell the asset for, it's indicative of a future cash flow. So from a conceptual framework point of view, there's a lot of uh warmth towards fair value so what is fair value in a nutshell fair value is market value fair value is exit value fair value is the amount you would expect to sell an asset for in an orderly transaction between market participants and that definition points to a number of facts. It's what we would expect to sell the asset for. In other words, it's the market value. It's not what we think it's worth. We may have something which we don't place a high value on, but if the market thinks it's valuable, then it has a high fair value. Conversely, we may have something which we think is very valuable to us, irreplaceable, but if the market isn't gonna buy it, then it doesn't really have a high fair value. So it's not entity specific, it's market driven. Fair value talks about an orderly transaction. So it's not what you would sell it for in a rush. It's not what you would sell it for in a liquidation or a forced sale. An orderly transaction, a normal transaction in the ordinary course of business. And it talks about selling it to a market participant. In other words, to a stranger, not someone who is your brother or your sister or your director or your subsidiary. In other words, not a related party, although it doesn't say that. It says it has to be a market participant. So all of these things are helping us understand the principle of what fair value is. Fair value is also uh, pre-transaction costs. So it, it, it's what you could sell the asset for but don't take into account the cost of selling the asset. And we want the highest and the best. So if somebody can put it to an alternative use, if the market values the land on the basis of um, housing, on the basis of an alternative use, if that's legal, if that's appropriate, th then that's the value that they place to, even though we use it as a farm 
or we use it as a car park or whatever. Now, look, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go on too long uh, about fair value. There's more you can read about Fair Valley. If you go on my LinkedIn profile, I've, I've posted a, a blog there about Fair Valley and, and taken you through an example where we talk about the fair value of liabilities as well. I suppose the other thing to mention at this stage about Fair Valleys before you go off and look at it in greater detail is the hierarchy. And the best form of Fair Value is level one. Then we slip down to level two, then we slip down to level three. Level one is basically where you've got a perfect market, an observable input, and you can see an identical item. So things that would be um, stocks and shares in a quoted company, that, that, that would be an example of a level one fair value. Very reliable, very objective, very simple. You observe the market. Yeah bananas and apples and oil. You can know what they are being bought and sold for by just looking at the market. Level one, identical items, active market. Level two, there's a slight problem in that either the market's a bit stale, uh, it's not that active, or maybe the item that you're selling is not identical. So things like property um, would tend to be thought of as, as level two. You can observe a market, but it's not that active. It's not that identical. And then level three, you've got no market to observe. So there isn't an observable input. So the company itself has to come up with an alternative valuation, uh, often based on discounting, often based on the present value of future cash flows. Please. Make sure you're all over this standard, IFRS 13 Fair Value Measurement. I've just given you a brief introduction to it. But you've got to see how it's applied in SBR exams. And, and sometimes it's applied in a, in a subtle way. I sometimes think of it as like the, the tomato sauce to a question, the salt and pepper to a question. The question may be about financial instruments or maybe about investment property or maybe about useful information. And we're weaving in fair values and weaving in IFRS 13 into our answer. Or it may be a direct head-on question about IFRS 13. It's not a big number crunching question. It's not a big number crunching area. It's about understanding the principles, and being able to apply them. And even though we've got all this guidance in IFRS 13, actually determining what is fair value is going to require judgment. Yeah, and if you're unethical, if you're dealing with an unethical person, they can, of course, sway the judgment and try and manipulate the, the figure that goes in the accounts. So it's important as ethical accountants, we know the standard, but it's also important that we are objective and we are detached and we are competent when we're exercising our judgment. Thank you very much for listening about my story on fair values.